To work out the gradient of a linear function, the horizontal distance from P to Q is H. And if we think of P having the coordinates X, F of X, because P is located on this curve, Y equals F of X, then the coordinates of Q, X plus H, F of X plus H. Now if I want to know the gradient of the curve at a point, so at the point P, if I imagine that Q now is very close to P, so close that H tends to zero, then the gradient of this line segment will be equal to the gradient of the curve at the point P. We define the gradient at P as being the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h take f of x, that's the difference between the two y values, all over h, which is the difference between the two x values. So this is how we define the gradient function of any curve. It's the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h take f of x all over h. So the numerator here is the difference in y values and the denominator is the difference in x values. So this can be written as the limit as delta x tends to zero of delta y over delta x. Delta means small change. So it's the small change in y divided by the small change in x as that small change in x tends to zero. And this is written as dy by dx. The limit as the small change in x tends to zero of difference in y's over difference in x's. So if delta x is small, then dy by dx is approximately equal to delta y over delta x. So remember, this is the gradient at a particular point, and this is the gradient of that line segment as the two points are very close together. Rearranging gives us delta y is approximately equal to dy by dx multiplied by delta x. And this gives us a method for determining an approximation for the small change in one variable when given a small change in a related variable. Now notice that delta, this is the lowercase delta, can be written as capital delta, but usually capital delta is just used for change, whereas lowercase delta is specifically used in the context of a small change. We'll work through some examples so you can see this small change formula in action. Our first example is a function y is 3x cubed plus 2x take 1. And we want the approximate change in y when x changes from 2 to 2.01. So we can differentiate the function dy by dx is 9x squared plus 2. And our change in x, delta x, is equal to 0 0.01. x has increased from 2 to 2.01. Because this is small, delta y over delta x is going to be approximately equal to dy by dx. So I could use my small change formula, rearrange, and say that the small change in y is going to be approximately equal to dy by dx, which is 9x squared plus 2, multiplied by the small change in x which is 0 0.01. Now my x value is 2 and delta x is 0 0.01. So substituting in these values, 9 times 4 is 36 plus 2 is 38. So 38 times 0 0.01 which is 0 0.38. Now, of course, I could work out exactly what the change in y is when x increases from 2 to 2.01 by substituting in these values to the original formula. 
when x equals 2, y is 27, and when x is 2.01, y is 3 lots of 2.01 cubed, plus 2 lots of 2.01, take 1. And this is getting quite tricky now without a calculator. But if you enter it into a calculator, you'll find that the result is 27.381803. And so the difference in y values is 0 0.381803. Now remember, we just found that delta y was approximately equal to 0 0.38 using the small change formula, which for most practical purposes is accurate enough. It's accurate to two decimal places and it's much easier to use and does not require a calculator. In our second example, we want the approximate change in the area of a square when the sides increase from 20 to 20.25. So we've got the area of the square which is x squared if we say that x is the side length and the approximate change in area delta a will be approximately equal to dA by dx multiplied by delta x. So dA by dx is 2x, and my small change in x is 0 0.25. So this is 0.5x, and my x value is 20, so this is 10, and we're in square centimetres here. Now, if you want to know exactly what the change in area of a square is, you can type into your calculator 20.25 squared take 20 squared and you'll find that it is 10.0625. But again, our answer was correct to a reasonable degree of accuracy and it didn't involve the use of a calculator and as long as we know and are familiar with the small change formula it's quite easy to use. The volume of a sphere is found using the formula 4 thirds pi r cubed and we want the radius of a sphere with a volume of 1000 cubic centimetres. Solving for R gives us 6.2035 centimetres, four decimal places. Now we're asked to determine the approximate change necessary in the radius to cause the volume to increase to 1,010 cubic centimetres. So if we want an approximate change in radius, that's delta R, and that's going to be approximately equal to dr by dv multiplied by delta v. Now dv by dr is 4 pi r squared. So dr by dv is the reciprocal of that, 1 over 4 pi r squared. And the change in volume is 10 cubic centimetres. So this is 10 over 4 pi r squared. And then we would need to substitute in the value of r that we found earlier to give an approximate change in radius of 0 0.02 centimetres to two decimal places. With small percentage changes, the small change is a percentage of one of the variables. So here we've got v is 2x cubed, and we want the approximate 
percentage change in V when X changes by 2%. So we're looking for delta V and that's approximately equal to dV by dx multiplied by delta x. Now x changes by 2%. So a common error here is to think that delta x is 0 0.02. But you need to remember that x is changing by 2% of itself. So the small change is actually 0.02x and not just 0.02. So our small change in v is dv by dx which is 6x squared multiplied by 0.02x which simplifies to 0.02 one two x cubed and we want this as a percentage change in v so if v is two x cubed and we have zero point one two x cubed what is that as a percentage of v zero point one two x cubed as a percentage of two x cubed is 0 0.06 which is 6%. Marginal rates of change concern the cost or revenue or profit of increasing the number of units by one. So if we have x units of a commodity being produced and we increase the number of units by 1. In other words, delta x, our small change, is 1. Then delta c over delta x approximately equal to dc by dx becomes delta c, the small change in the cost, is approximately equal to dc by dx because of that delta x equaling 1. And the same could be said of delta R or delta P, the increase in revenue or the increase in profit. So this is a special case of the small change formula where dc by dx, which is called the marginal cost, tells us the approximate cost of producing the next unit after we've produced x units. So similarly, delta R would be the marginal revenue and delta P would be the marginal profit. In each case, we are considering the additional cost or revenue or profit after X units have been sold. So in this example, we have a manufacturing firm producing and selling X items and we have the cost function for producing the X items we're asked to determine the approximate cost of producing one more item when x is 100. So that special case of the small change formula, delta c, the small change in cost, is approximately equal to dc by dx. And dc by dx is 6 plus 5 x to the negative a half which is 6 plus 5 over root x and when x is 100 this means 6 plus 5 over 10 i.e. 6.5 now of course we're dealing in money here so this is 6 dollars fifty and that's the cost of producing the 101st item after we've already produced 100 items.